listening to the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Radio's authority on the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology. Celebrating 25 years of broadcasting. Broadcasting around the world and to the great beyond. to the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Radio's authority on the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology. Celebrating 25 years of broadcasting. Broadcasting around the world and to the great beyond. All Hit Radio. Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome to the X-Zone, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. My email address is X-Zone at xzoneradiotv.com on all social media sites, X-Zone Radio TV. And you can listen to the X-Zone, 724-365, as well as the live show that we do Monday through Friday from 8 p.m. Eastern until midnight at www.xzoneradiotv.com. My first guest tonight is Coyote Chris Sutton. He is a shamanic practitioner, paranormal investigator, who has been who began his spiritual journey some 23 years ago as a normal guy who found himself with one foot in this world and one foot into the world of spirit. Now, since then, he has been receiving teachings in the Lakota and the Sisi Weiss shamanic traditions, along with instruction in shamanism with English influences. Chris is a member of the Red Cedar Circle of Southwest Illinois, which follows the C.C. Weiss medicine tradition of the Northwest Coast, and this is the shamanic tradition that he follows closest. He has been trained in many aspects of the paranormal and psychic arts, including numerology, tarot, and dowsing. Chris began doing paranormal investigations in 1998, and he enjoys being able to help people who are having problems with negative paranormal events. Still a normal guy at heart, Chris lives in Godfrey, Illinois with his family, and has been in social services for many years, and still likes beer, sports, and wild turkey. Joining me now is, is Chris Sutton. And Chris, welcome to the Exxon. I couldn't help but throwing that, that wild turkey in there, pal. 
<laughs> Thank you so much, Rob. It's great to be here. And um, <clears throat> yes, you couldn't leave the wild turkey alone. And, like, I always tell people. <laughs> I always tell people, you know, like a lot of shamans are pretty are like holy men and things like that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, this shamanic practitioner is just like it's just a normal guy, and I still do all the same things I did when I was growing up and became as a young adult. So a holy man, I am not. So please don't. You know, a lot of people out there who, who follow certain paths and mm-hmm. don't drink alcohol. And I, God bless them. You know, I'm I'm all good with that. But you know, I'm I just kept on being me, and everything works out pretty good. You know, Chris, the way I look at it, I was raised as a Christian, and mm-hmm. if Jesus drank wine with his meals, why shouldn't I? That's right. Yeah, exactly. So, Chris, uh, tell me, what does a modern shaman do? Well, um, it's hard to say. There's so many different. You know, the thing about shamans is there's so many different paths to it. Yeah. Um, backgrounds and all sorts of things like that, teachings. Um, so you got because you got the European aspects of it, and you know Tibetan aspects of it, which mm-hmm. you know Buddhism. You know Tibetan Buddhism is is, a, is shamanism and Buddhism mixed together. But you know, I guess I can only speak for myself. Really, <clears throat> I mean, other people do a lot of different things. Um, basically, what I do is, um, in my opinion, everybody's been given a gift. Um, this is part of our medicine teachings. And it's a seatless medicine. Is everybody's been given a gift, and you use that gift to help, first to heal yourself and then to heal other people. Right. And and so what I do is is take that gift. And I spend it. I you know I, I do a lot of spiritual type of work as far as spiritual spiritual advisement. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, the tarot and stuff kind of falls into that. I'm not a fortune teller. I use that basically to help guide people in their life quest or life path, whatever you want to call it. And then so I you use it that way. I use and I you know when you practice shamans you, you work with the spirits and they help you with healing right. and uh, with, with your divination and then i kind of took it you know like and i also do the paranormal work but mm-hmm. what i tend to do that is i use my shamanism um training in that to, to help um other people who are like you said having like i put in my bio they have you know problems with um negative entities but you know also to help the entities themselves if that's if that's also necessary because you know when there's a shamans you know they deal with um with energy, you know, you're dealing with spirits, you're dealing with energies on um, people's bodies and things like that. And when you go into the paranormal, it's just it's a different type of, of spirit, but it's still the same energy and type of energy. So you just it's just taking it to, to uh, you know kind of a down different path there. All right, listen, you and I have to take a um, a commercial break here. We'll be back in two minutes. Exo Nation Coyote Chris Sutton is our special guest this hour. His website is Coyote Chris. Dot com. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Love getting your emails. Exxon at exxonradiotv.com. And don't forget, starting March the 21st, the Exxon is going to be on the Mutual Broadcast Network from 3 in the afternoon until 7 at night Pacific. The Exxon is growing with you, the members of the Exxon Nation around this world and beyond. Don't go away. Afterlife expert Roberta Grimes was the first one to say that dying can be fun. Now her best-selling book, The Fun of Dying, is available in stores worldwide. So if you wonder whether death ends life, how it feels to die, or what heaven might be like, The Fun of Dying was written for you. And if you have always been afraid of death, or if you worry that your life has no meaning, let The Fun of Dying ease your fears and bring new meaning to your life. Nothing said in The Fun of Dying is based on the teachings of any religion. Instead, Roberta draws on evidence to explain how death happens, how it feels, and what comes next. A lot of the best death-related evidence was produced in the first half of the 20th century. When it is put together with recent discoveries, it tells a consistent and amazing story. Roberta Grimes blogs and answers questions at robertagrimes.com. Her wonderful book, The Fun of Dying, is available on Amazon and at stores worldwide wherever books are sold. You're listening to the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. While science pursues fact, magic accesses the quantum level, bridging random facts to form truth. 
As long as science and magic remain separate and polarized, the truth cannot be known. I'm Wilda Wiecka. Join me on the Science of Magic radio program dedicated to unification and evolution of consciousness. During each episode, I'll be speaking with experienced and respected scientists and mystics. From astrologers to astronomers, from medical doctors to shaman, the scientific method to dowsing and intuition, we will weave together information from seemingly divergent practices to promote unity and enlightenment. Join me, Wilda Wiecka, and the Science of Magic right here on the Exxon Broadcast Network. For more information, visit www.thescienceofmagic.net. Star began to demonstrate a metaphysical connection to the spirit world as a little girl. Her family noticed the connection, but it was a great-grandmother who told the family that Linnea was indeed gifted. The great-grandmother, who was also gifted, felt that Linnea had indeed inherited these attributes. It has been noticed that oftentimes, such things are passed down through the generations. Linnea was also born with a call, a thin white membrane across a newborn's face. Legend has it that if the baby is born with this call, the child will have second sight, or what we call psychic abilities. Linnea Starr does past, present, and future, and has the gift of prophecy. It is written within scriptures that if you are able to give factual information, and prophecies indeed come true, the gift indeed comes from the divine realm. Linnea Starr does large interactive groups as well as private gatherings. For more information on Linnea Star or to contact Linnea for a one-on-one consultation, visit her website at www.linneastar.com. That's www.l-i-n-n-e-a-s-t-a-r.com. Welcome back, everyone. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell, coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. My guest this hour is Coyote Chris Sutton. His website is coyotechris.com. And Coyote, I have to ask you this question. Where did you get the name? Where did you get the handle of Coyote? (laughs) That's a very common question and a good one. Um, Why would somebody put that label on themselves? Because is, you know, many of your listeners probably know, as you may know yourself, that, um, you know, Coyote's a trickster, and he kind of gets into trouble all the time and that type of stuff, which, you know, that kind of mm-hmm. fits me pretty well. I get, I'm in trouble a lot, so um, it's just kind of the way it's been. Um, I don't do things the right way. I tend to, um, you know, I have to look before I, I leap before I look, and I run into walls and things like that. But um, how I got that yeah. was... Are you still there, Coyote? Oh, and, and, yeah, and so we okay. have, uh, when you practice shamans or any type of, some, many of the paths, um, spiritual paths, you um, acquire spirit animals along the mm-hmm. way. Yeah. And I started out with a hawk, um, was my first spirit animal. And that was when I was working, I'm doing uh, psychic type, more psychic work, learning that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I, um, the bear, I, I met the bear when I was working on becoming doing healing work and the bear medicine is what i use then um but there, i always knew there was one more going to come down the road and, I, and it's sort of personified it's like a personality part of me i suppose mm-hmm. and but anyway i knew one more was coming i just couldn't figure out what it was and when it would come and i was um one day i was walking in a park um in kankakee illinois where i used to live and it's a, it's kankakee river runs along there and there's a nice path through the back through there down to the river with pretty high grass at the time, it was in it was in the summer, and it was early in the morning. I was walking by myself, and all of a sudden, I heard the brush kind of move, and all of a sudden, I out comes a coyote, and it stops and looks at me, 
and I stop and look at it, and we do that for about 10 seconds, and it kind of, you know, kind of snips and went on. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't happen very often. They don't usually get close to people, and they don't, you know, they, they, he could have heard, he heard me coming. I was sure he wasn't being stealthy. And so um, he come out to take a look at me, and, and you know, and then went on about his business. Well, then after that, <clears throat> um, I was working at a, a metaphysical shop in the St. Louis area. I live very close. I live right across the river from St. Louis now. And um, some guy starts teasing me and says, you know, you're the coyote. And I got this, and it just stopped me in my tracks. I get that. You get these, these chills down your spine when you know something important has happened or that a certain energy or medicine has come to you. And I got to think about it. that's that's it. You know, that's that must be it. I went, my thoughts went back to where I was uh, walking on that path and then I, how I go about doing medicine work and how I do about going about living my life as I tend to, um, you know, break eggs to make, I'll let break too many eggs to make the omelet, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And um, I just stuck. I said, well, you know, that must be who I am. You know, I must, so I, I went ahead and adopted the, the moniker and um, I include it with my name now. Um, and a coyote, one thing about coyote is, and, I, and one thing I try to do, they're not just tricksters, they're not, they're not just buffoons. Um, they're also incredibly uh, critical smart Alex, which I can be. Um, but it's always in a way that is, is to teach, to help. And m- basically one of my jobs is to hold the mirror up to people and say, look for the real you. Um, I meet so many people when I'm, you know, in my walk and life, you know, everyday life, mm-hmm. who, are just, who don't know who they are. And they're trying to find who they are, and they want to become somebody different. And it's, they have such a hard time finding that. And part of my job is to help people realize that, whether it's through trickery or through uh, sarcasm or just being straight up honest, like you know, this is this isn't who you are. This is this is who you are, and you, you need to try to work towards that. And um, especially when people come to me, I need help. And mm-hmm. um, well, here's your help. And I'm, I'm whether I'm flipping tarot cards, I might do that. I might just sit there and look straight at them and say, this is what I see. Um, we may just sit and talk to the spirits, see what the spirit has to say, because they have their guides who they haven't met who will communicate with you and say, hey, you know, wake, wake this sucker up so I can do some work with him. Sure. Uh, and so, um, but basically, that's how I got is by giving that close physical contact, and I see them all, I see them constantly. And then, um, you know, somebody calling me that. Um, it's also to let people know that, you know, I'm, I'm going to give you what you, you know, people always want what they want. I give you what you need, you know, that's, and that's how I work. How did you get involved in shamanism, though? Where, where did that, where did that, that path come from? It, I think it found me. Hmm. <clears throat> um, this started back uh, 23 years ago, I think. You no, know, 24. Yeah, 23. My daughter's 24, so she's about a year old. Um, we were living in, I guess I was living in up northern, sort of northern Illinois, and the national powwow came to um, a little little county in um, central Illinois and um, at the fairgrounds. And my wife used to, and I always blame my wife on all this for all this. It's all her fault because she took me to this powwow. Of course it but, is. Um, yeah. Of course it is. I can't blame myself. But anyway, you know, I can't forget the fact that spirit put me where I needed to be and mm-hmm. I took me where I needed to go. I, you know, so, but anyway, so we, you know, she goes, and she used to powwow dance when she was an explorer troop, a uh, Girl Scout troop here in the, in the States. And she, um, she took me to, she said, oh, I want to go see the powwow, you know, because this is good stuff. I said, okay. It was like the Nash one. So you had all these different tribes um, and all this different regalia, just a beautiful spectacle. And um, so I went to, um, I'm walking around, and I didn't know anything about this stuff. I mean, about much about the Native American culture. Um, I didn't know much about spirituality. I was raised uh, in a Unitarian church, right. which is very humanist and, you know, not given to that type of stuff. And... Um, so I wandered into a livestock barn where they were having a gourd dance, which is a warrior's dance. And this is where I realized I had one foot in this world, one foot in the world of spirit. And I, I was just, it's one of those defining moments in your life it's hard to describe because to put words to it sort of takes away from it. But um, I just had that feeling, that, that not just feeling, just that knowing in my heart that there, I needed to do something here. That something was was calling me, and I didn't, you know, I wasn't sure what to do. So um, I went out. We walked around, did a bunch of other stuff. I went to the the trade tables and whatnot, and picked up a book called Black Elk Speaks, which is about um, a Lakota Sioux shaman. 
and read that and said, wow, I just, I, I've got, you know, this is really cool stuff. And you know, with all the medicine work and that type of thing, I said, I got to learn more about this. And so I, a week or so later, I'm flipping through a, a monthly aspectarian, which is a Chicago newspaper that has to talk about metaphysical and the spiritual things and things like that. So somebody's having a pipe ceremony. So I call up, can I come up? Yeah, sure, come on up. So I, you know, I learned to smoke the pipe then, and it just, that's where it started. And just, it just kept, you know, I kept going places. I kept getting called places that somebody, another teacher would show up. And um, I learned my, you know, my, my psychic stuff from a Hegan Indian um, that lived in Chicago. And, um, but I learned, met some other guys that, who had, um, were, gosh, these guys were just amazing medicine people. And they were taught by one of the greats, the guys named Frank Fool's Crow, who lived on the, um, he lived on the reservation in South Dakota. I can't remember. I think it was it the Glala? I'm not sure one of those towns in there. Um, but and so they taught me stuff, and that's basically how I got rolling into it. Is it? It, it kind of found me. And um, like, and they say though, the student's ready, the teacher appears. And so I kind of cast out there to the spirit, to the universe, that I want to learn more about this stuff. And and here, and this is what I got. And so I've been, that's, I've been kind of following that those breadcrumbs ever since. So tell me. What kind of help do you give people? What kind of help have you given people in the past? Um, well, I've done psychic work, like I've said. I've, um, and that can include um, trying to find people or find things for people. Um, I, I've done psychic readings to help people figure out, you know, again, what their life path is, what they want to do mm-hmm. with their life. Uh, you know, and you get a lot of people that come up to you and say, um, Especially if you got if you got tarot cards in your hand, they want you to do fortune telling. They'll say, well, "What am I going to find my soulmate?" Well, then you have to break their hearts and say, "Listen, you're not going to find your soulmate until you do X, Y, and Z for yourself. Right. You Deal yourself." Um, so I, you know, again, I, I give I tell people what they need, not what they all, always want, but always with the best intentions. Um, so I've helped people in that sense, and have them come back to me later on and say, "You're right, thank you. I, I you know, I needed to do this and this." And um, I've done healing work. Um, with people for physical illnesses for um i have also helped people who have had bad encounters with spirits and have that residual energy on them and help them you know get rid of that um let's see and sometimes just healing work just to get somebody rebalanced again they need that their energy gets messed up it gets clogged up in certain places of their body Mm -hmm. um because we live in a real stressful world so what i found out a lot a lot of times, you know, people will store energy on the back of their neck and their shoulder areas for some reason. That's where stress seems to go for a lot of the people I've worked with. And so breaking up that kind of thing and try to get them equal, you know, get them back on a, an energy equilibrium, but then talk to them at the same time and try to get them back to a mental equilibrium as well. Because, um, you, know, like, you know, I've spent so many years counseling people in, um, in social services and right. things like that, and that's really come in handy so I can also, you know, I can, I'm pretty good at just sitting and talking to people. And so that's also a healing thing. You're just listening to people. Um, you, you know, there's so many people out there have that, these little gifts that they can use, and, and certainly that's one of them. That's a, it seems like a very mundane gift, but it's a very powerful one. Just to be able to sit and listen actively to somebody and what their problems are just is, can be so helpful. Um, in the paranormal sense, I have um, you know, helped people get rid of entities out of their house. Hmm. Um, and that, you know, what you do there is like you do a cleansing. That's what I do is a cleansing. Right. Do you use sage? Includes, yep. Use sage. I use a lot of stuff. I use sage. I can use sweet grass. I can use cedar. Um, cedar's a nice smoke. Um, it's hard. It's kind of hard to get your hands on it sometimes, but I'm lucky to have a tree in my yard I can, you know, I can get into. But, um, but I pre- predominantly use sage because it burns better and it's got that wholesome cleansing aspect to it. But then what I'll do then is I follow up with candlelight. And that's a Sisiwa's medicine tradition. The candlelight, and I think some other traditions as well, is bringing the life spirit, the pure life spirit, the good stuff. And then, um, and that helps. So you've got, the, you've got it cleansed, and then you bring in the light in, which brings in, you know, the good spirits, the good stuff, the good, you know, the, 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 the light of God. I mean, you could put it that way as well. Um, and then sometimes I'll follow up with sweet grass, which brings in good spirits that will help protect your house. Um, then... Um, we can, um, sometimes what I'll do, and I always teach people, whenever I do this with people, I always teach them how to do it so they're not calling me up all the time because I want people to learn how to do it themselves. And it always makes it more powerful when you do it that way. Um, 
So anyway, we clean the rooms, and then sometimes we'll take we'll we'll seal out, we'll seal out seal off each room with black salt. Hey, Coyote, Chris, salt I hate over. to do this to you because we're on a roll, but I've got to take my news break at the bottom of the hour. Please stand by. Exo Nation, Coyote Chris Sutton is our special guest, www.coyotechris.com. And we'll be back on the other side of this news break as we continue here in the Exo with yours truly, Rob McConnell. Don't go away. Wouldn't you love to know the secret to everything? Well then, meet Dr. Kimberly McGeorge and her cutting-edge, breakthrough knowledge that combines science with possibility. Dr. Kimberly brings real-life answers and healing to those open to alternative solutions. She teaches solution-based programs and classes that will change all areas of your life forever. Specializing in conscious creation, intuitive readings, and energy medicine, you can rapidly shift health, relationships, business, and money and abundance challenges quickly. Receive her best-selling book, Secret to Everything, at no cost by going to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone. That's right. Transformation can start now. Just go to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone and receive Dr. Kimberly's book for free. You're listening to the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Thomas Jefferson was a Burgess of 27 when he met Martha Whale Skelton, a 22-year-old widowed heiress who was fondly called Patty by her family. They were married on January the 1st, 1772, and they took up residence in a cabin on the building site on top of a Virginia mountain that Thomas had named Monticello. As Thomas and Patty slowly built their first version of the great house at Monticello, the Revolutionary War was heating up. Patty, with difficulty, bore five children, but only two girls survived. Thomas's political career developed to the point where he was often away from home, but after he authored and signed the Declaration of Independence in Philadelphia, he resolved never again to leave his wife. He was elected the governor of Virginia, just as that state became the revolution's last battleground. The Revolutionary War ended in 1781, and Thomas gladly retired altogether to my family, my farm, and my books. But Patty continued to want to bear her treasured husband a son, and late in the summer of 1782, she died of kidney failure at the age of 33, four months after having borne yet another girl. Thomas was so devastated by her death that he never remarried, He mourned her for the rest of his life, even as he helped to frame the peace in France and then became the first Secretary of State, the second Vice President, and the third President of the United States. This story is true. Thomas Jefferson was such an obsessive letter writer and record keeper that we know where he was and what he was doing nearly every day of his adult life. Every significant thing he says in My Thomas comes from his contemporary writings. My Thomas by Roberta Grimes is now available at Barnes & Noble, Costco, Target, Books A Million, Hudson Booksellers, Kmart, Walmart, Sam's Club, Walgreens, CVS, and online at Amazon.com. You can visit Roberta Grimes online at www.robertagrimes.com. The scientist and the mystic have been on an age-old, relentless search with one thing in common. They seek truth. Their paths converge in the 40,000-year-old practice of shamanism, an ancient science delving to the quantum level of life, facilitating healing, manifestation, and evolution. I'm Gwilda Wiecka, the founder and director of Path Home Shamanic Arts School, a unique Colorado State certified occupational school, training shamanic practitioners and teachers. We also provide classes for empowering personal lives through shamanism. 
Our certification classes are in week-long segments, enabling international participation, and online classes and long-distance shamanic healing sessions are available. Come discover the science of magic in the limitless world of shamanism. www.findyourpathhome.com Unwilling to be the government's deadly assassin, gifted psychic Kahara Mitchell went AWOL and ended up buried under rubble in the wake of a great tsunami. She regained consciousness far from Earth on the medical ship of a Dagaronian intergalactic fleet. Has she been rescued or abducted by aliens? The Chalice of Carrie, Kahira O'Donnell's latest paranormal science fiction romance, is the passionate story of an Earth woman and her destined mates, twin kings from another galaxy. Kahara uses her gifts fighting alongside Lords Rom and Ra in a war that will determine the destiny of galaxies. The Chalice of Kari by Kahira O'Donnell is now available at kahiraodonnell.com or at amazon.com. You're listening to the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. What Happened in Benghazi is revealed by Nicholas Genix, author of Obama, Islam, and Benghazi. He informs the American people that President Obama deceived them by advocating a strong foreign policy prior to the 2012 presidential election, and Hillary Clinton supported this deception. As the title infers, there is a connection between Obama, Islam, and Benghazi. Ample evidence informs Americans that Obama's early indoctrination in the Quran developed an infinity for Islam, why the Quran is the source of discontent in many countries, and why the Obama foreign policy deception led to poor military action and caused the loss of American lives in Benghazi. Genex provides 36 questions for the Select Committee on Benghazi to validate if Americans are justified to mistrust President Obama and Hillary Clinton. An overview of Obama, Islam, and Benghazi is presented on the website www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Annie Callahan, dedicated to negotiating a position for Earth within the Dagaronian coalition, had trained for three years to become an Earth ambassador. Yet, the very eve of her arrival at the capital ruling planet, she is claimed as destined mate to an oversized, mating maddened vamp who swears he will never release her. Lord Astaran, king of the Macian sector, has waited over 900 years for his destined mate, Having found her as an alpha vamp, he is unable to relinquish Annie, virtually holding her hostage until he can claim her. Yet Macians cannot survive without their mate's love. How could he strip her of her citizenship, her ambassadorship, and her freedom and expect to win her heart? With All That I Am by Kahira O'Donnell is the latest book in this exciting series, The Dagaronian Chronicles, guaranteed to keep readers coming back for more. With All That I Am by Kahira O'Donnell is available on Amazon.com and KahiraO'Donnell.com. You're listening to the X Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Welcome back, everyone. Coyote Chris is our special guest. Chris Sutton is his name. His website is www.coyotechris.com. Uh, Chris, how do you ex- how do you access your your spiritual power? Well, we 
get most power comes from the earth and what what flows around us. And I, lo- I love the word chi. You know, it's it's a it's a Taoist um, Chinese word. Um, and to me, that's you know the energy that flows through all things. Um, but basically, what we do, or I do, I shouldn't say we, I should say I. Um, obviously, our power comes from the earth and comes from spirit. Um, what I am, I'm a vessel for that, and I open myself up, let it come through me, and then I let it call the shots. Um, if you try to use your own energy, one, you'll burn yourself out and you'll make mistakes. When when spirit's talking to you, you're not thinking through your head so much. You're following what's in your heart. And it guides you. It guides you really well. Obviously, that takes a lot of practice to separate the two between your heart and your head. Um, I had one teacher I had a lovely saying. He goes, you know, that brain is a wonderful tool, but it's a lousy master. It lies to you, and that is certainly true. And um, to me, and so what I and there's, there's a thing um, Frank Fools Crow taught called becoming a hollow bone. And what you do, and this is an exercise that I'll do, or, or and like almost oh, almost like a ceremony, actually more like a ceremony. Mm-hmm. But as you um, you breathe in and out deeply seven times, then through the bottom of your feet, you bring in the, the energy of, of Mother Earth. So you feel that energy from her coming into you. And you let that swirl through your body and all around through you. And then when that gets going through your body, then you, to the top of your head, you bring in the energy of, of Father Sky. And let that come in. So you got the masculine and feminine balance there. Mm-hmm. All run through you. So you run, let that run all through your body, and then you kind of take a self check of yourself. Is there something that's you know clogging the energy? If so, reach in and grab it. You know, so you need to be. If you're thinking about your grocery list or the fight you had with your spouse, then you you know you've got to let that go. Make sure the energy is the number one thing that's flowing all through your body. When you've got everything flowing, you've got your mind where you're just totally focused on what you're doing. Then you think about. Somebody in your family is very close to you about it may need healing, and so you send out energy to them. And you, in your mind's eye, you see their face, and you send them energy. And after you've done that for a little bit, you think of somebody in your town, your neighborhood, that might need some help or some energy, some healing, or some something like that. Need, this needs this healing energy to come to them. And so you send it. You see them in your face, in your mind. So you, you, you see their face in your mind, and you let that flow out towards them. And then after that, you think around the world and say, you know, look at all the bad things happening all around the world. And you pick a spot and um, say it's um, the Middle East, someplace in the Middle East, and where people are suffering, and you send the energy out there. And after all this is rolling like this, and you've, you know, sent energy to people, you've, you've put, brought in energy to heal yourself, you send energy to heal other people, then you're ready to go. Then you've got your energy flowing. It's coming from spirit. Mm-hmm. And then you can do psychic work. You can do healing work. You can. I do this before I go into a paranormal investigation to make sure my energy's up, and so I can deal with whatever I need to deal with. Let me ask you, Chris: Have you ever helped uh, someone who was spiritually stricken during a paranormal investigation? Yes, I have. As a matter of, as funny as you asked that on my web page, on the front page, I actually, mm-hmm. a, a friend of mine, I was in um, Mineral Wells, Texas, at a paracon down there. And a friend of mine, Alejandro Dominguez, who is the Dead Explorer on YouTube, and I'll plug him because he's a great guy. He's a friend of mine. Um, he's got some good, really good videos on YouTube there under, under Dead Explorer. It's all right. We're going to bill you for the ad. <laughs> Sorry about that. But he's a friend. Anyway. So am um, I, and I'm still going to bill you for the ad. <laughs> <laughs> Take it out of my check. Um, <laughs> but um, anyway... So he, we were up in there in this house, and, it's, yeah. it's, um, and he was stricken there. And so we got him, he came outside, he got him outside, and um, so I um, kind of grabbed him because he was starting to wander around the parking lot like he didn't know where he was. Hmm. And he was, he, he had brought, something had gotten into him and had really dropped a lot of negative energy into him. And so what we did, we sat him down, and then I got, I always bring my, my medicine bag with me. And got out some sage and sage him off, cleansed him off really good, and sort of comes out. And you kind of, what I do is I'm, you know, I've got my energy flowing like I just described earlier, and then I'm looking at him, and you know, picking out, trying to pick out things where I can see it's been, it's affecting him, where where some energy is still sticking. So we get the feather out, we start taking that out and mm-hmm. using the, the sage at the same time, flipping that stuff out of there, and so um, 
then um, after we got him all cleaned out, he started to come around a little bit. I gave him a crystal to hold in his hand because his stomach was hurting. And so um, he grabbed that. I gave him that and had him put it up against his stomach where, where the pain was. And after that, I took the, got the candle out, brushed him off, got all the some good um, good spiritual, clean spiritual energy into him. And then um, got him up, and we got, got the crystal back, and he it was just red hot. Um, he what he did what does what that does is suck out you know some more of the, the bad stuff, the bad energy. And he was pretty good after that. Um, he comes up and he's um, talking straight, and he says, you know, he really, he's, you know, he's, he was really in distress there for a while. And uh, but that that is on my web page. You can watch that video um, of me doing that. And um, I also did some singing, as I recall. So, you know, I, I have to stop and think what I've done sometimes because I, you, when spirits tell you what to do, you don't always remember. And you just kind of do what you know. You just kind of go with run with what your instincts are telling you, right. what spirits are telling you to do. And all of a sudden, afterwards, you're like, "Whoa! What did I, I forgot what I did?" Listen, what do you what do you keep in your medicine bag? Like you, you said, you had some sage, but what other mm-hmm. what else do you carry as a medicine bag? Let's see. Well, let's, let me turn around and look here. What I got into tonight? That's a pen. Sometimes I put all sorts of different things in there. Um, today, I've got my sage and with my abalone shell. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got a turtle rattle. It's a turtle with a deer leg rattle on it, and then um, I keep. Tobacco, sweet grass, candles, um, bunches of those. Um, I tend to travel pretty light. I'm trying to think what else. What else do I have in there? Um, I keep um, some colored cloth, piece of colored cloth to make a circle with. Sometimes we mm-hmm. want to make a, a safe circle that right. we can. And I've done that on paranormal investigation before. Where I'll make safe circles so people can get in if they get freaked out, um, or they get scared, or you know if something's after them. So if they feel like something's after them, they can go in there. It's a safe spot for them. Um, sometimes I use little little um, bundles of sage to make those. Um, the pieces of cloth I have are all my, the color medicine colors that I first learned, which is white, red, yellow, and black. Which is those are Lakota colors, and I still use those um, to make my circles with. And let's see. Um, sometimes I carry fetishes in there. I got a bear fetish. I put in there sometimes. Um, my dowsing rods are in there. Um, I got tarot cards. Um, let me think. Well, it carries, I might need it carries quite a bit. Yeah. Well, I got a big bag. I see. <laughs> L- so, listen, you, you just never know. The abalone shell, What's what do you do with that? Well, that's just to hold the sage. Okay. Um, and so that way I can walk around without burning people's carpets up. Oh, right, 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 right. And and the um, turtle rattle? Um, sometimes the need to make that sound. Sometimes you can use them to call spirits. Um, if you want somebody, you kind of, yes, a lot of times you want to make some noise to get them to, to hear you. Mm-hmm. Not for negative spirits, but for your spirit guides and, and other spirit helpers to come and help you. And sometimes I'll use it, like if I'm doing a house cleansing, I'll use it to try to break negative energy up. Um, so I hit, you know, I might use the rail first and hit it with the sage. That kind of breaks things up a little bit, mm-hmm. makes some noise. And then I hit it with the sage, which makes it easier for that to clean out before, before I hit it with the candlelight. And so I make, sometimes it makes things more complete. If things feel real oppressive, I'll use the rattle to get things um, to get things broken up. But that doesn't work. I've got a big old bell that I'll use sometimes, too. Although I tend not to do that. It makes, it makes the devil's own noise itself. Um, and then if that, does, if that doesn't work, you use a baseball bat. If I have to. <laughs> <laughs> not that I much, do much good, but you feel better with it in your hand sometimes. Um, I thankfully I've never I haven't come across anything yet that it's where I've been um, after I've done that I've had need anything bigger but um, you got part of that is this you know when I go out and do this stuff I I don't want to say I'm confident but I'm very sure I am confident but but I'm really sure of what I'm doing and I always hold that in my heart that I'm here to you know I'm here to help and um, I can acquire get a lot of energy rolling. And so I don't tend to worry too much. Now, next time I might get knocked on my butt. Right. But, um, you know, that's, I'm, oh, I'm very, you know, I'm very worried. I'm not, I'm not the baddest dude in the valley, but um, I'm pretty, you know, I'm pretty confident what I'm doing. And you have to have confidence if you're going to go do that stuff. If you're going there scared, you've got problems because they'll pick up on that. Negative spirits will pick up on that fear. Has there, any, has there ever been a time when you have felt that, you might lose this spiritual fight because the spirit that you were up against was pretty powerful. 
one time, and actually I was leading a tour in a local haunted mansion. Um, and they, 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 this, this place has normal family ghosts that are actually pretty pretty nice. I mean, they usually pr- do pretty well for the people that come in to see them. They seem to enjoy the attention. Now, one thing I've found in places like this that seem to attract haunts is that um, there's usually a, a, some type of energy source, if not necessarily a vortex or something like that, but it's something that has a lot of energy to it. Um, where I live, there's a lot of light. We, we live right next to the, right on the Mississippi River, basically. And we're on top of these bluffs, and there's lots of limestone, and there's all sorts of energy in that type of stuff. And so there's some pretty hot spots, pretty big hot spots where I live. Um, this place especially is very high up, one of the higher spots in town, um, long history of haunting. And so there's a lot of energy there. And, and that's kind of a side note. I kind of wonder, too, like there's all these places I think were holy, was, were holy grounds for Native Americans, not because they're haunted with, you know, with those spirits of Native Americans, but because they knew where to find those places, and that's where they would do their ceremonies and things. So I'm, I'm kind of wondering, too, if they're not, you know, were also used for that, you know, years and years ago. But what happened was we got these people here, and this is a, this is a good place with lots of energy. Um, but every once in a while you get what I call transients, and they'll come to hot spots just because they, they, they're attracted to the energy. And this has happened. I've done tours of this place um, dozens of times. And something, a couple things came in once that I literally got a little bit edgy and kind of nervous about. And I, you know, I'm always very confident that I can protect. I had like 20 people down there that I can protect people. Mm-hmm. But I was a little bit nervous this time. And but these are two big black things. They don't feel very good and they're not outwardly, you know, vicious. But certainly, I believe, I believe had the, you know, the ability to be so, to do so. But so what I did, I had another guy in there with me, and he, I gave him the heads up. So we just started moving energy around the circle. Everybody's sitting in a circle, and we started moving energy to the outside. Very, you had to do it very quietly because you don't want to, you don't want to upset the guests. And we're able to keep them back, and they eventually, you know, walked off. But I think if they wanted to make an issue of it, it could have got nasty. And so I always think back to that 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 could have been one time that things could have could have gone south pretty quick, because wow. they did not feel good at all. Um, well, what was it like doing your shamanic work uh, with filming of the uh, the Dead Files Revisited? <laughs> I really had a good time doing that, and um, <laughs> it was. And I I asked them, "Well, how did you find me?" And they said, "Well, we just we found a, a list in the, of of shamans in Illinois. It was in some website, you know. So I was like, you know, let's pick this guy. He looks like he looks like he looks like fun." And so um, they called me up, and so I said, "Yeah, I'll go." And so anyway, I go down. I grew up this town in, in northern Illinois, Rock Island. And now, when you're doing TV, um, it's not like what they told me was is that um, well, you know, you just do your thing. We'll just follow you. I said, "Well, that sounds fine." You know, go and do the cleansing and whatnot. And, well, first I get there. Well, we want you to do this. I said, "Well, you know, okay." I said, "I told him, I said, I'll do. I'll discuss with you what I, you know, if it gets too outlandish, I won't. I just won't do it. You know, it's I'm not going to do that if it's too if it's too stupid looking." Well, we want you to go out back and, um, you know, and, and challenge, you know, the, these things out here, you know, these spirits, which they were out there, okay. And so um, I said, all right. And so I go out there and I was, you know, drumming you the four directions and stuff I would probably do anyway. But they <laughs> they want you to do things so it looks good on TV. So they wanted to, they wanted to film me walking down this hill. Well, the, the guy who lived there dumped all these leaves down there. It was kind of still cold out and, and it was still some, like, damp and kind of frozen in there. And so I kept slipping. I was going to yeah, say, kind of about, slippy, yeah. Yeah, I, and I weigh about 50 pounds more than I do now. Yeah, so I, you know, I have good balance anyway, so I'm kind of, you know, going down on one leg. And so they finally they finally trashed that idea. And so <laughs> <laughs> it just didn't look so good. So it, it, I didn't look too, you know, like too threatening that way. So um, <laughs> so, so I go down there, and I, I've got my drum and my staff with me. So, and I, you know. So I, you know, I had to drum to the four directions about 15 times because he had to get the sound right. I can, I can just hear the spirit saying, what the hell is he trying to do? We're here, I damn know. it. I know, exactly. And they're probably thinking, what's he doing? Oh, there's a TV show. That's what the deal is, you know. And so um, and and so we did that a few times. Finally got that. And, you know, and basically you, I was there working for three hours straight and was on TV for like five minutes, maybe. Um, but... Oh, I was doing that, but it was a legit case. You could feel what was going on. Um, I, I talked to Amy Allen 
not because she, her, she and Steve Shelby weren't there. They were um, it was a, it was a dead files revisited. So the revisited ones, they just kind of rehash some yeah. things from the old from the first part, and then they, you know they show what they've done. And so I talked to Amy later about it. I saw her at a, at a Paracon. We got to chat for quite a while, and um, we had actually sensed the same things and didn't know it until I, I hadn't even seen the first show yet. And when I watched that, and Amy see it, said the same thing I was saying, so I'm like, yeah, that was pretty cool. That was pretty legit. Um, so we finally got back in the house, and, you know, I told them, you hurry up and wait. And we got to do this, we got to do that, and they're filming other stuff. Mm-hmm. And so, but the, it was legit. I mean, these, they had two children who were still pretty young. Both of them were under 10. And both of them had skills, had talent. Um, but they um, they were, you know, they were getting messed with. And mm. so I was really, I was really... I you know I, I want to get this. I want to you know clean this house. I want to help these folks out. And so I, I'm going through the thing. And so you'd have to stop and do. You know, of course, the, the, the promise of we'll just follow you around did not come to pass. And when it came to this, and, and I didn't get. To, I think we started at four or five, and I didn't get done until you know eleven o'clock. And it was a school night, and I had to kind of hurry um, because the kids had to go to bed and that kind of stuff. And so um, I got it done. And I talked to the, the the parents. You know, the folks that lived there later, and they said that it was better. You know, that, that they had got things under control. And so that was good. Um, All right, Chris. Yeah, it was, it was in- Chris, we've got to take our final break. Please stand by, buddy. Exo Nation, okay. Chris Sutton is our guest. He goes by the name of Coyote Chris Sutton. His website is coyotechris.com. And uh, we'll both be back on the other side of this break as we continue here in the Exo from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. Little children aren't the only ones afraid of the dark. Millions of soldiers return from war zones with PTSD, anger, frustration, fear, and loneliness, much of which surfaces during the darkness of the night. You have the chance to change the lives of these American heroes. Songs and Stories for Soldiers.us provides free MP3 players for these men and women. With a list of 3 million songs in 16 different styles, 100,000 audiobooks, and 30,000 old-time radio programs, every veteran can find something to soothe and comfort them at no cost. All our players contain an 8-hour audio program designed to help veterans fall asleep. With 1,500 plus vets now participating, it's our goal to deliver 10,000 audio players this year. Go to our website at Songs and Stories for Soldiers. Soldiers.us. Help us help a veteran make it through the night. I am Dr. Carl O'Helvey, founder, president of a new cancer foundation focusing on evidence based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. You're listening to the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. If you enjoy reading a good mystery with a touch of the paranormal, then you'll love From Out of the Woodwork by William S. Peckham. Sean Kennedy, a Toronto contractor, buys derelict houses, guts them, and turns them into multifamily dwellings. When Sean buys 29 Livery Lane, a century house in ruins, and starts the renovation... The house fights back. He is visited by ghosts of owners past. His visions are triggered by touching an oak mantle, reading a faded letter, opening an old locket, or opening a brand new casket in the basement. These visions will take you on a trip across southern Ontario from Niagara Falls to Toronto to Kingston. From Out of the Woodwork is now available in paperback and on your favorite electronic reader. 
To order your copy of From Out of the Woodwork, go to www.williamspeckham.com. That's www.williamspeckham.com. You're listening to the X Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Exo Nation, uh, my guest this hour is uh, Coyote Chris. He is a shaman. His website is www.coyotechris.com. First of all, Chris, great having you on the show. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Um, if, if somebody listening tonight is is interested in shamanism and they would like to become a shaman or learn what it would take to become a shaman, what advice do you have for them? Well... My first advice would be to <laughs> um, make sure that's exactly what you want because it's not a walk in the park. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very difficult, um, and you get pulled places. Sometimes you just don't want to go. However, if that's you sure, because um, they say you know, sh- sh- you know, people who practice shamanism are are called to it. Although I certainly don't mind it when people you know want to learn more about it. <clears throat> um, probably the first thing to do is to look in your area and see if there's anybody who teaches that um, there so they can um, maybe you can learn from somebody see if there's spiritual groups and things like that um, you can go online and see if there's any shamanic teachers uh, in your area I think if you just go on and um, to use a search engine and say you know you know, shaman, you know shamanism or shamanism teacher or something like that um, that would you could certainly find something that way um, <clears throat> Or, you know, there's books you can read. I mean, certainly it doesn't make it a shaman. you got to be trained by somebody. Um, and there's so many different paths to, to take. And, and if you do ask somebody to teach you, you should always ask respectfully. You should always take that person a gift and um, let them know where your heart is. If it's something you want to do just for fun, don't do it. I'm telling you, it's not about, you know, it is fun. It's fun for me, but I had to learn, you know, you have to go through all this other stuff for it to be, for it gets to this point. Um there, like I said, I, I, there are books out there you can check out. Just get an idea of it. You can look up those up online. Um, but basically, you should meditate. Um, and I, every time I run into a spiritual maze who's very spiritual, based tell me, you need to meditate more, and which is true. But you got, you got to get to know yourself. Um, a person who walks this medicine path knows themselves and knows. And you got to be honest with yourself and who you are. And if you need to make some changes, make some changes. Um, you can't be selfish. It can't be about money. I mean, there's not really money in it. Um, it's about helping people. If you want to help people, and if you feel called to um, to do it in this fashion, um, Spirit will put somebody or something in your way to, to make sure you get what you need as far as the training goes um, or to learn more about it. And that's basically how it works. I mean, it's not like, you know, go to the, the technical technical college you sure. know, and, and, uh, and do it like that. Um, um, and that's what happened to me. I just put out the universe. This is, I want to learn more about this. And it wasn't even about shamanism then. It was about just learning about the spiritual thing that was going on. And that led me to where I, to, you know, to down the shamanic path. Um, so yeah, I mean, start, you know, thinking to yourself, to, look out to the universe, know it. The universe, know this is what you want. Look and see if there's anybody in your area you can go in and talk to and listen to about what's going on and about, about shamanism. Um, there's a couple of organizations that teach classes around the country. Um, you can look those up as well. And those, like I said, you do a shamanism a search, and you know, those those guys will come up too. There, there are some pretty legit ones out there. Hey, Chris, we want to thank you ever so much for joining us. It's been a great pleasure talking to you, my friend. Uh, keep the great work up. It's nice to know there are people out there like you who really care and want to make a difference in a person's life. So thanks very much for joining us. Thank you, Rob. Loved it. Everybody out there, just, you know, be strong and be safe and live to help others. And drink wild turkey. Yeah, and have a wild turkey. Yeah. All right, Chris, take care. Exo Nation, Chris Sutton has been our guest this hour. www.coyotechris.com. I'll be back on the other side of this break. Don't go away. <laughs> 